Okay, right, welcome everybody to the next edition of the Extreme Performance Series Video Blog Edition. Uh, I'm your host today, Mark Akhtemachuk, Performance Engineer here at VMware. And with me today, I have Sadir. Now, Sadir is one of our Oracle on vSphere gurus. We're happy to have him here. And so, Sadir, take a moment and introduce yourself, please. Yep, thanks. Uh, thanks for having me, Mark and Todd. So my name is Sudhir and I'm a senior, uh, senior staff solution architect and the global practice lead for Oracle for VMware. Been working with Oracle technologies for the past 25 odd years or so. We are primarily pre-sales focused. We also get involved with a lot of customer escalations, a lot of customer uh, POCs. We assist with customer escalation, working with GSs very closely. So happy to be here. Awesome, thank you. Well, you know, as one of the premier Oracle on vSphere guys, you know, what would be one of the most common questions you get uh, when we approach the topic of Oracle. Is, is there anything special that needs to be done in order to run Oracle workloads on a VMware vSphere platform, right? So what are the throttle? What are the different levers? What are the different feature sets, right? That I can employ to make my Oracle workload go faster, right? And the answer to all of that is very simple fact, right? You know, making sure that we inculcate best practices in every layer of the stack that's of utmost importance, right? And so, and we have a lot of collaterals, be that the performance best practices guide. So these are lessons learned from the field, right? And by employing that, right, typically 80 to 90% of the problem is solved. They are able to get that, get away with that. But I'll be lying to you if I say 100% of the problem is solved. I mean, the rest of the 10% essentially is the regular tuning of the database, the 101, that, you know, where you have to look at the queries, where you look at queries gone wild and so on and so forth, as and when the workload increases, but yes, Adhering to the best practices, looking at the best practices guide for the VMware vSphere specific version, the application, a best specific, uh, the application best uh, best practices guide, that's of utmost importance. And I would say that would be a first step when you embark on this journey to virtualize Oracle workloads on VMware platform. Awesome. Well, I know we'll touch on some of the practices, you know, right away here. But you know, when we think about Oracle databases and we think, geez, you know, these are the complex things to do. Everybody's fearful of that. You know, tell me about, you know, what do you consider a large database instance, a large configuration you've worked with here recently? So as part of my journey working on Oracle workloads on VMware, I mean, there have been a lot of instances, a lot of customers where I worked with really large, large, large database. But recently, you know, a database comes to my mind where it had, I would say, close to 36 vCPUs and went across two Numa nodes, right, and 512 uh, gigabytes of RAM. Essentially, that was the SGS size setup. The RAM was 768. The SGA was 512, and the database were, database were pushing close to 90 to 100 terabyte, right? I mean, that, that had a mix of, you know, the hot, the warm, and the cold region, essentially. And there was a lot of issues with the database. Primarily, the fact that, you know, best practices was, wasn't adhered to. I mean, uh, they didn't have new best practices set up. They didn't have any of the best practices from a memory, from a CPU, from a storage setup. So we were called, and I was called, and to actually have a look at that particular, uh, you know, workload, that particular virtual machine. And right in when I saw that virtual machine, that workload, we were able to you know, offer suggestions, right? And that kind of led to the customer having better, uh, better performance. And at some point of time, we were able to point him to these best practices saying, you know what, now that we have got things more stable, I think it's right time for you guys to start looking at these documents, the best practices document for the vSphere specific version and the database. And what, what's interesting in what you kind of just said there is the fact that that VM is not significantly large compared to what we can do in the vSphere platform. Absolutely. But yet that's a very sizable Oracle instance, yes. That, yes. right? And so, you know, I just want to kind of reassure the customers there again that, you know, vSphere can support scale beyond what you need for your typical Oracle infrastructure today. So absolutely, absolutely. And there's so another how, quick, sorry, there was another quick point I wanted to make was, I mean, the best practices one would adhere to when you're running your Oracle workloads, such big Oracle workloads, we call them monster virtual machine, right? That is not different or that should not be treated any different than when you're looking at small virtual machines or medium sized virtual machines or medium sized Oracle workloads, right? The same care, the same feed should be done for those workloads as well, right? We need to make sure the best practices are adhered right for any Oracle workload, be that small, medium, be that medium or be that large. Well, perfect. So, you know, as you approach these things and as you engage, do you have like a common methodology or, you know, what would you like to share with the, our customers out here as to how you approach things? I understand you have some slides with you today. Absolutely. So let me go ahead and bring up those slides and we'll talk about the Oracle on VMware methodology. So, I mean, as we can see in the slide here, essentially this slide talks about, you know, the Oracle workload design methodology. And when we were, when we were to look at it, I mean, 
right? These are the typical steps that one would follow if one were to deploy Oracle workloads. If one were to look at this design methodology, this flowchart, there is no one step that cries out. There is no one step that is particular to any physical architecture. So all we're trying to say here is there is no change in the design methodology when one embarks on this journey to virtualize Oracle workloads on a VMware VCO platform. So it's exactly so, the same, yeah. So with that, so agreed, a lot of this kind of looks like you should be doing this anyways. This isn't virtualization specific or unique. You know, so what do we have for, you know, virtualization practices? Any particular virtualization practice you'd like to cherry pick? Absolutely. So let me move on to the next slide. And we actually have the Oracle uh, databases on VMware, the best practices guide. And, you know, this needs to be tagged on with the performance best practices guide for the vSphere specific version. So, and as an example, if one were to start embarking on this journey, the first thing that they should read or the first thing that they should go through is the performance best practices guide for the vSphere specific version. The reason being that talks about the infrastructure per se, that talks about, you know, what are the new best practices? What, is the, what are memory best practices? What CPU best practices, vCPU best practices, storage best practices. And once we do that, layer on top of that, the Oracle databases on VMware best practices guide. And that, that kind of goes into the operating system level best practices with respect to Oracle workloads, Oracle workload best practices. So kind of putting these two guides together, that's like the seven layer cake. So if, for example, if anybody were to ask me, can you give me a run book of all these best practices? My simple answer would be print out the performance best practices guide for the vSphere specific version, print out this particular guide, the Oracle databases and VMware best practices, staple them, staple them together. There you go. That's your run book. And we'll have those links uh, posted at the bottom of the video here. And again, a shout out, uh, you're just actually working through an updated version of the, the Oracle guide there. And so that yes. will be available shortly. So keep an eye out for that. Now, what about the idea of, okay, so we, we've followed the methodology, we've built this thing correctly, and now comes the real work, right? Let's look at some performance data. Let's look at some troubleshooting. So what's your strategy there, Sadir? The tools that the database administrators have been deploying and employing for you know, for the last couple of years, that doesn't go out of the window when one deploys Oracle workloads on a VMware VSphere platform, right? Along with using tools that VMware provides, for example, the VR ops, right? And then we are able to use the VRealize, the true visibility suite, essentially the blue Medora, the management pack for Oracle. And essentially by using these tools, one is able to extract metrics from all of the layers of the stack, right? The Oracle layer, the operating system, the virtual machine, the ESXR layer, even the storage layer, and essentially put that on a large screen TV, right? If, if, I'm, if I may say so, right? And that way one is able to have a consistent look at all these metrics. And that is that, that becomes very easy when we are trying to troubleshoot right? Any issue. Using these tools, for example, using the true, uh, the true visibility, the blue metal adapter, right? One is able to cherry pick and pick the, you know, the weight events or pick the metrics from the Oracle database that he or she is really interested in. We don't have to go with the general CPU utilization, memory utilization. You can go down to the level as low as DB file sequential read, or let's say DB file scattered read, the log file sync, you know, metrics that Oracle DBAs are really interested in to tune the queries and to make those databases go faster. So what I hear you kind of saying is the fact we don't lose any visibility into data or troubleshooting. And in fact, with virtualization, we use some other tools, but we still have all that visibility to help solve those problems, right? So Absolutely. again, the fear of, you know, let's not virtualize because of that. Well, and I know you have kind of a, a one-stop set of documentation here for us, but before you get to that one, you know, that one question I wanted to throw out is, uh, what what does it look like today? Oracle using some of this industry leading technology and you know PMIMS and and stuff like that. Uh, where do you see that all going today? Right, a good question. So I mean, actually, Oracle can absolutely take advantage of the new technology. For example, uh, for example, for example, with VMware virtual volumes, right? That can drastically reduce the day two operation for Oracle DBS. Typically, people have this mindset that day one operations, the installation, the configuration takes a long time. Essentially, it's the day two operations, you know, the backup, the restores, the database refreshes, the database cloning. That essentially takes a lot of time from Oracle DBS, from Oracle Solution Architect. So, by using virtual volumes, you're able to cut that time drastically and they are able to focus their attention and their time onto other, other pressing matters, right? So, we came up with the reference architecture and I'm, uh, the reference architecture is essentially put up in the one-stop shop, right? With persistent memory, PMEM, right? We came up with the, we came up with the reference architecture uh, using Micron PMEM, right? And we are actually working with Intel, DC Optane use cases with PMEM. I mean, and the use cases we came up with Micron was accelerating, you know, Oracle databases by placing the read log files on the, v, uh, on the VPMEM disk data store using smart flash cache. And there was also a potential risk, uh, potential reduction 
of Oracle licensing as well. So there are a lot of advantages using these features, you know, whether that's PMM, whether that's PBRDMA, using uh, one gig huge uh, large pages, right? Or any of the new features that VMware vSphere 7.0 brings to uh, the market today. So, you know, we only have a few minutes to kind of pick your genius brain here, Sadir. And so, you know, one, once the video ends here, where can customers go? Where do the people go to get all this information you're talking about, referencing architectures and stuff like that? Well, you know, all of the collaterals, whether that's Oracle on vSphere, whether that's Oracle on vSAN, Oracle on virtual volumes, Oracle using P, uh, PMM persistent memory, Oracle with PV RDMA drivers, right? Any other blogs that we have written, any KB articles that is very essential, you know, for uh, best practices for Oracle databases, any and any and all collaterals can be truly found in this one-stop shop. The link is there at the bottom of the slide. That's excellent. And I think, you know, I look at the link there and I say 2017. So Sadir, you've been doing an amazing job curating this, keeping everything up to date, keeping that same link active with all this excellent information uh, for folks out there. So I want to say thank you very much, Sadir, for uh, joining us today. I'm really glad to hear we're having massive success, you know, with Oracle and the vSphere platform and uh, happy to point everybody towards your resource center here. So thank you, Sadir, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Thank you.